Today, we are talking about Recruitment Tech 2020 and the rise of the machines, because there is this theory, we keep hearing about automation, artificial intelligence, robotic recruitment, blah, 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 blah. Wayne and I have both been in recruitment for a number of years. We're coming up to our 20th year now. Barclay Jones is 11 years old next week. We've seen enough of tech, recruitment, process, staffing, etc. Um, to tell you that we feel we've got some really good hacks for you today to help you understand what you need to do with your technology next year and maybe what you also need to do with your business. So Wayne, tell us a little bit about your background, please. Uh, I've been a recruiter. I've been a database administrator. I have been an IT director. Fabulous. And uh, to a certain extent, I followed Wayne along the road as well, hence why we're at Barclay Jones. So like we say, we started in 2008. Prior to that, we we're both IT directors of some recruitment firms. And our day to day job is basically to work with recruiters, their leaders and their marketeers. We've won awards for what we do. We get great testimonials. We're going to blow our trumpet because apparently that's what we need to do on these things. But ultimately, our job is to generate what we call the three C's for clients, candidates, clients and colleagues, which hopefully leads to cash because that's kind of why we're all in this. We've also got some news as well. As of this time next week, you'll be able to dial on and start trialing what's called recruitment hit. So high intensity interval training is not just for Joe Wicks advocates or people that want to get fit. But if you want to get fit in recruitment and they want to basically take advantage of the current stat, which is 94 percent of us learn better online. OK, but it needs to be the right kind of online training, not crappy, boring webinars that you might have been on in the past they need to be relevant to the specific roles that you do so we're launching adapt next week very soon afterwards bullhorn and a lot of the stuff that i personally do with recruitment marketeers and sales leaders will go online very soon but i must stress we're not giving up the face-to-face -face end we know that blended training as we call it works much more effectively than what i would call abdicated training which is oh there's a system over there log on when you've got a minute blended is the future we are suffering in our industry from a 43% on average turnover rate in recruitment in the UK, which is pants to be absolutely frank. Um, and at the same time, most recruiters last a year within the business that they work in. So we need to nail this down because we can't claim Bussman's holiday anymore on this. We've got to get better. And also when we're looking at technology, the one thing you don't want to be doing is buying loads of technology next year spending loads of money on technology just to stay the same. It's not a great stat. So we're going to look at five things this year, today, not this year, today. We're going to look at what your goals are. We're going to talk about how emerging tech, tech that's on the periphery, now it might be tech that's been around for a while but not been used in recruitment, is going to affect you. We're also, because this is what we're actually paid for, we are going to talk to you about the current tech you've actually probably got in your business or that might be on the outside of your business sticking its nose against the glass and how you could use that more effectively. And then obviously as well, your key goal, we hope, is still to maintain that human interaction, that human element of a recruitment. So how can we use technology to drive more of that crucial chemical reaction, which is conversion? and then talk to you about what we think your action plan needs to be for next year. So lots of really uh, practical tips. So one of the questions I've got for you, and we've only actually got one question for you today, is what do you wanna fix in 2020? What's the thing that if you and I had a glass of wine this time next year, looking at our first Christmas tree, what would you be saying, Lisa, thank God I fixed X. Now, you can fix all of those things if you like. Um, basically, tick the box that most represents what you want to do next year. Let's understand whether or not you want to place more candidates or you want marketing to be more effective. I mean, I would say that every business needs to do more of both of those. But some of you might have a, a client lead generation um, thing. Some of you might want your staff not to quit because they've not been trained. Two thirds of the people that quit their jobs last year said you didn't train me. However, every recruitment business I go into does do an element of training, but equally, and I've been doing a load of work and loads of research on this in the last six months prior to us launching HIT, we are told that between 50 and 100% of the training run in any organization is normally going to be either induction training or health and safety. And then recruitment leaders say to me, Lisa, all my staff to be more effective. I'm like, we need to flip in training then. My voice is going. Thank you very much, everybody. Okie dokie. So next, what I'm interested in is talking to you about 
the four C's. If I do anything with my clients, it's get them really fixated on this. I nicked this from a client who actually gave me the three C's. And I said, well, what does this lead to? And he goes, well, I suppose it adds up to cash. I'm like, well, I'm going to nick this and adapt it. So when we go into clients and we say like, well, you want your staff to be more productive. What does that mean though? You know, yes, make more phone calls, but what's the goal here, right? We need more candidates. Maybe you don't need more candidates because actually a lot of our clients have got too much data and not enough information. They've got too many candidates and not enough applications. They've got too many clients and not many invoices. Too many systems and not enough process. So we want you to be fixated on your four C's in 2020. And we want you to think about how you're going to use tech to get more candidates, clients, colleagues, and ultimately how you're going to make more money and not just make more money for the people you're buying the tech from. Because actually the one thing you can't make next year is time. Or can you? We've done some recent studies on our bullhorn training, for example, and our adapt training. And we're saving our average client between four and five hours a week per person. Um, that is crucial for me because it's the one entity in the world you can't recycle. Once you've used it, it's gone. But actually, if you can create it, oh my God, if ever there was a gift, what would you all do? And this is a rhetorical question with an extra four or five hours a week. Some of my clients would let the staff go home early. Most of them would make them make more phone calls so they made more money. Some things to think about. But actually, 70% of recruiters we spoke to want to have more automation in their roles. But when we've actually said, well, what? Well, we just need things to be more automated. Well, what do you want to automate? What do you want to speed up? So it's that thing that we need to be really thinking about. As much as automation and AI are a big deal for everyone, we're all talking about it. But then I ask the obvious question, what is it you want this, these systems to do for you? And actually, there's an argument to say that they need to create time. Because gone are the days, I think, where we trust systems to maybe match candidates to, to jobs. The main reason for that is because when we put the candidates on the system in the first place, we've probably not coded them up right. So that might be something to think about. I've been in recruitment for 20 years. We started using DAX during the early 2000s. It was a revolution at the time in terms of all, um, automated and artificial intelligence. And I'm not speaking ill of Daxter, it's a fantastic bit of kit, but it did not revolutionize the market. What it did do is create an opportunity to mine more data. But as recruiters, we are still spending a third of our week sourcing for one job. So what can we do here to minimize that sourcing time? Maximize our phone and FaceTime, because that's the bit that we can really, really make some money from. The process, in my humble opinion, is what's broken, because systems can only exist and make money for you if they drive your process. The problem is, at the moment, unless you believe all the hype about sci-fi recruitment, we still need humans to drive systems. So buying loads of kit may not be your solution next year, but actually using it effectively, the problem is between the chair and the keyboard maybe, ladies and gentlemen, is what we need to think about. If recruiters are spending one third of their day on a fear of missing out, some recruiters have admitted to spend 20 hours a week sourcing for one job. I'm really sorry, unacceptable statistics. Equally, the amount of disruption to the average recruiter's day is phenomenal um, and is preventing them from doing the thing that you scream and shout about me when we come and do discoveries of how people are using systems. We've got some really serious issues in our businesses because now we've gone online, everything's in the cloud. It's kind of invisible to see what everyone's up to. But still, we have two phone phones on our desks, potentially sometimes two to four screens on our desks, seven or eight different places we can source candidates from. But fees have never been lower. We've never spent longer on sourcing and our ability to place vacancies is becoming harder. And still, there's a candidate shortage, theoretically. What we've also got is a problem with our sales and our business development. So going back to my comment earlier on, ladies and gentlemen, process is the thing we need to focus on in 2020. How can systems automate that process? Well, if we think about actually the stats are very common that 50% of buyers choose you if you call them first. But the problem is they don't buy from you first. Actually, the stats are a little bit, they're either scary or they're great for people who are really anal with the phone, <laughs> which actually it would be a great course way to create. Mm -hmm. How to be anal with a phone call. 50% of buyers buy from you if you call them first, but actually it does take them a while to come back to you. So don't be despondent. 80% of the phone calls we make go to voicemail and most of them are never returned. So in other words, if you're a criminal leader listening right now, you're going, God, why can't they just pick up the phone? They probably are, but it's difficult to maybe understand that the first call doesn't work spoke to someone recently who's actually targeting their staff with no's. They're actually KPIing them on the volume of no's they get 
because actually it's going to mean more phone calls because statistically speaking the more no's you get potentially the more yeses you're getting 16 percent of converted leads are contacted by the sixth call so ladies and gentlemen you need to make six calls to the same person next week to convert that's not hard is it we can all do that but maybe by the first or second most of your recruiters have not been trained to take it on the chin so that might be something else to think about next year what technology what processes could you implement in your business that's going to enable people to get on the phone for this long that is something to really think about rather than get on the phone get on the phone six times his assistant's going to help you do that we need more phone time we need to generate more warm calls this is another challenge that some of my clients have and they come to me and they say lisa can you train my staff to generate warm calls because actually cold calls they can generate them themselves but they don't work so you need processes often connecting sales and marketing together it's just something very close to my heart you need processes to link sales and marketing together so they're connected and ultimately we can see who's on your website we can see who's on your linkedin profile we can see who's looking at jobs but maybe they're not going over that tipping point it's a recruiter's job to make that conversion. Let's not buy into the myth of social media selling. It really bloody doesn't, humans do. But I do think that since the recession, we have kidded ourselves that recruitment is that painful. We've kidded ourselves that it's, it's just, that's how it is now. And we say to ourselves, oh God, Lisa, I've got more tech than I've ever had. I've got more data than I've ever had. I've got less time than I ever had. Recruitment has become really, really hard. No, we've made it that way. Um, Margins are definitely lower, fees are definitely lower, staff retention is pants, but we are spending a fortune on our offices and we are trying to improve the work, the experience that our recruiters have. I've recently been working with lots of recruiters who are making a massive effort with their internal um, environments, but their staff turnover is just as bad as recruiters who are doing an okay job of their internal environments. What's the, what's, the, what's the snap? The snap is if you train your recruiters to stay, they will stay. If you train them to deliver their process through effective use of systems, they will stay even if they don't have a toaster or a PlayStation. So some really, really interesting things that we need to talk to ourselves about for next year. So I'm going to hand over to Wayne now, who's going to talk to you a bit about how emerging a tech, how emerging a tech, how emerging tech is going to affect recruitment in 2020 and what you might need to think about. Thank you, Lisa. So, yeah, I use this slide quite a lot and it basically gives an evolution of where technology has come from. Uh, I've got a client who basically worked in the 70s. Technology for them was basically hand writing out a letter, um, posting that to them, asking them to be at a specific phone box so that they could speak to that person about a specific job. Imagine the, the time to hire in that process. That's quite a significant amount of time. What technology has enabled us to do is to really reduce the amount of time it takes us to introduce a client and a candidate and fill those jobs. Since the noughties, I suppose, we've been introduced to new platforms, new variations of systems, and there has been a massive explosion around all these different sorts of systems that you can play with and get around with. Uh, where are we going? Well, we're going into this now, this, this homogenized uh, environment. There's many different systems that a recruiter has to get involved in um, and many different ways in which they can basically integrate and that confuses them to certain degrees. My rule about technology is that you must have a job description for every single piece of tech that you introduce into your organization. If you're going to introduce CRM, tell people what it's there to do, understand exactly who's going to do what. If you're going to basically introduce automation, then understand who does the automation and whose role and responsibility it is. Will we ever get to minority report status? I hope so. I think it's coming. I don't think we're far away. I think the evolution in technology is there. Uh, Microsoft have obviously got their Surface Desk. Uh, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's pretty exciting. Um, the Deloitte Insights uh, paper, which comes out every year, is a great way of understanding what's happening in the world, the greater world. When we first came across this video was still uh, around DVDs uh, and they predicted that more and more people would be involved in and around um, uh, the PVRs, the personal video players. Uh, and lo and behold, you know, 10 years later, we are seeing more and more people looking at, uh, looking at videos, looking at television, stopping and recording and choosing what they want to look at. I imagine radio time to look at the schedules uh, is very, very minimal at this day and age. So recruitment technology, over the past five years, I'd say there's been quite a big noise around three or four major areas. One of them's video, one of them's what I would class as digital disruptors, uh, and then automation and AI and machine learning, I kind of grouped them together, but uh, let's just have a quick look at them. 
video platforms have been around. They've been launched oh, 10, 15 years ago. I remember some coming into the market. The problem with video at that precise moment in time was bandwidth, video bandwidth wasn't accessible. It was too slow. Now we've got a gigabit internet architectures in the organizations that you work for. So video is much simpler and much, much easier to basically use. Um, it's a great asset for helping businesses get through to clients and getting them to understand exactly what it is they're doing about their candidates. So Audro and higher CVs, et cetera, et cetera, are a really good way of basically managing that process. I think what I'd add to that though is one of the challenges that we are seeing is we're going into businesses that have got these video platforms and the tech has been bought, but the process for rolling out that tech and getting return on investment from that tech has not quite been thought through. Um, there is this theory that the younger generation, I wish I was part of that, loves video, but actually nine times out of 10, it's not gonna work for them. So you've really got to think this time next year, if you are gonna bring video into your business and you should, because it is more effective, the stats speak for themselves, how are you going to introduce it into the business? How are you going to ensure that the quality of video you create is acceptable, but more importantly, that the recruiters see it as an effective part of their process, rather than just a bit of admin, something else that's gonna get in the way of them picking up the phone. You've got to think about what's in it for them. You've got to think about piloting, not just purchasing. Uh, perfect, I'm absolutely correct. It's a really, really good way of uh, uh, getting that through. Uh, digital disruptors, these are organizations which uh, historically have been your traditional recruitment companies who have now got a digital platform. They're removing some of the interaction that recruiters have. Um, they tend to be organizations that have invested in platforms that enable candidates and clients to interact with each other. So it's taking away some of the, uh, the need and the speed um, of getting candidates placed. This is very, very big in the hospitality sector whereby somebody may need people very, very quickly, very able to log on and see those sorts of things. Other aspects are big tech companies coming into recruitment. Now the difference between these is that they have huge budgets. Uh, people like uh, Snap HR, uh, they've had something in the region of about 20 or 30 million pounds worth of investment. Uh, and they're building their platforms, they're building recruitment systems. They are slightly um, uh, at odds with the recruitment industry because they're being disruptive around what traditionally happens. Um, analytics and AI, it's an interesting area. Everyone's talking about it, but what does it mean? Well, it means basically taking part of the process and trying to automate it, trying to get the computers to do some of that thinking for the recruitment consultant. Essentially what Lisa said is giving them more time to go off and do other things. People like Maya um, is a great example. They're a chatbot. Um, uh, ADECO have signed a three-year contract with them back in 2017 and what they're doing is they're starting to use chatbots to uh, ask some screening questions, ask people some specific questions and then screen and shortlist those candidates based on that, that, uh, that, that, those responses. It's an interesting aspect. Um, the, um, the industry, is it ready for it? Is the population ready for it? Well, millennials are. Um, when they were told that they were dealing with a chatbot, 96% of them said they actually preferred it. It's an interesting stat. I think the thing to think about as well is there's a lot of content in the market right now, in the recruitment market anyway, about chatbots and how, uh, whether or not they are effective. Um, I've seen chatbots on some websites. Um, I've tested them. I actually did one live. I was judging on um, a recruitment website, the Nora's a couple of years ago, and we were testing some of the websites live. And I went onto one of the chatbots and kind of left a message and took, took the mick really out of the business because they just weren't around. Uh, the chatbot itself, the, the interface wasn't very friendly the messaging was very robotic things have changed significantly so you know I would take with a pinch of salt even what I'm saying about chatbot for me it's it was an inexpensive thing to implement on your website and nice if statement for you if you are if you have a culture of testing things thoroughly before they go live really looking at them from a mystery shopper perspective and the process for the chatbot fits in with the recruitment process that you have then you should implement it. I see no harm at all in having a, a way of someone getting the answers that they need 
to questions at three o'clock in the morning, as long as they are clear that a human is going to call them back at 8.30. And that's the key. Is someone actually going to be around to deal with that? Often we find these chatbots have been put on websites because it's a cool bit of tech, but it actually doesn't impact on the recruitment process at all. And of course, a human would expect it to. So that's something else to think about. The other aspect of this machine learning side of things is being able to match candidates to jobs very quickly. If you work in an industry whereby um, uh, you either are something or you're not something like maybe um, uh, doctors and nurses, so long as you can prove that basically that person is compliant, then as soon as you put a job on, you want the system to immediately do the search behind the scenes and then match up the candidates and present those to the consultant. So that removes that element of automation. Uh, leading into automation. Uh, everyone's asking for automation and this is a brilliant way in which you can basically save time with your consultants. We all know that basically keeping in contact with the candidates and clients can be problematic, it's time consuming. So you can implement systems like Herefish and Candidate ID to really help that process. They're there to try and help um, manage your passive candidates by basically looking at whether or not uh, marketing information goes out, is it interacted with, and if it is, then it follows up with some additional information. Once you get to a critical point, then you can start saying to your consultants, look, these guys are actually active. They're, 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 they're ready for a potential move. You need to be speaking to these people. So it's helping consultants then that, that, that process of identifying candidates. I think it's that automation piece, like we said at the very beginning, it's finding a way of streamlining some of your recruitment processes to allow you to do other things more effectively. It could be at some stage in the next 20 to 30 years that we've streamlined recruitment so much that humans don't exist on planet Earth anymore. Well, we all know that's complete crap. So where actually are we going to end up? I would certainly say within the next 12 months, because every business is in beta as far as I'm concerned, especially while we're going through this technological change, that what we need to be looking at is freeing up recruiters to be excellent in their roles, freeing them up to be trained, freeing them up to speak to candidates and clients, freeing them up to stay within the business rather than working them so hard with multiple bits of crap data and systems that don't work in inverted commas. They work fine, it's just the humans might not be pressing the right buttons. Think about how automation is going to radically improve your business process next year. So talking about this, talking about the tech you're currently not using, I'm a big fan of the theory, you know, being a trainer within the industry that the coolest tool is actually the recruiter. It's just often because they have an opinion, they have an ego, uh, they have a history that they come in and, and we, we don't look at them in that way. We created a calculator, very, very simple spreadsheet here or, or table to help you understand the cost of messing about with your tool is cool. Tool is cool, your coolest tool, tool. tool. I've just invented a new bit of tech. Maybe I need automating, my throat is definitely going. We've done some work with our existing clients and they tell us that the calculator in front of you right now is quite conservative. You need to figure out whether or not this meets you, means this fits your, your bill, so to speak, literally speaking. What are you doing by not using their brains, their way of doing stuff? The forgetting curve equally is not on your side. Remember, you've got tech in your business that's probably not being used very effectively right now. And there's a reason for that. It's because humans get in the way because they're not robots. I spent some time with a client a few years back and they were looking to buy a new piece of technology. This is a bit of technology that everybody thinks they need. I'm not going to mention any names. And what I did was to begin with, we looked at the business process, we mapped it out and we understood where the breaker was and where people were buying out of their way of doing things and just developing their own. They had 200 staff, they had 200 business processes, lovely stuff, not, not actually. But what we were interested in is understanding what the business gave themselves, a grade out of 10 for how they were using existing kits. We, look, we, we listed all the kit and we said to the business, grade yourself about how effectively you're using all these kit. And out of 10, each bit of kit on average got a three. And I said, when you buy this new bit of kit that you say you need, it's going to revolutionize your business, tell me how you're going to go from a three to a seven or an eight. And they couldn't. So this is worth thinking about. Buying kit doesn't necessarily solve everything. And equally, the majority of your workforce, the millennials and the Gen Zs, are desperate to understand how to do things. They tend to ask more questions about the why, they're less money hungry, um, and they do prefer the online world. It's not that they want to completely abdicate or leave face-to-face -face stuff, but they really do prefer the online world. That's one of the reasons why Barclay Jones has spent the last six months building out its online platform, because the market is telling us that that's where it would like to spend some of its time. So obviously we've got this recruitment hit thing. Clearly we're gonna pitch this today because my marketing team would smack me around the head if I didn't. 
please pop into your chat facility HIIT if you would like some information on that. But the idea is it's high intensity interval training, short, sharp elements to look at process and how the systems that you've got will automate those processes. That's what we're really, really interested in doing because here isn't just for Joe Wicks. Actually, it does work in recruitment really, really well. We've seen a massive increase in engagement where people use what's called micro learning, short, sharp shocks. Equally, people retain micro learning a lot more effectively. They search for it more. I mean, I've got an 11 year old right now who's part of the Gen Z. And whenever he's having to do his homework, he's going onto YouTube to watch videos. He's currently learning magic tricks, which is a bit. Mm. Can I just show you this? I'm like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. Give me a glass of wine. But 94% of your recruiters out there will prefer micro learning, whether it's online or offline, they will prefer those short, sharp sessions to help them juggle the demands of their jobs. Let's face it, with the amount of systems and processes they have to deliver, they've got a problem. But definitely going online will boost their stickiness by 26%. And the great thing about online is obviously you can do it again and again and again. What we've also got coming or what we've got in our bags at the moment, we've probably already got stuff that we can use, big data, geofencing, all of this stuff is available to us right now and we are not using it effectively. We've probably got it in our business. Show me your recruiter that's not using Facebook. All of them use Facebook, but are they using geofencing, paid campaigns to actually approach candidates in the right locales? Are they using Cube 19, Site Squared, et cetera, Insight Squared, et cetera, to predict where their staff are going to bomb or hit target? What are they actually doing with their data? Equally, for obvious reasons, you will always hear Barclay Jones talking about CRM and CRM first. <clears throat> we found that the 80-20 rule doesn't quite work in recruitment in terms of placements. It's the 72-28 rule, in other words. 72% of the placements that the industry made last year were already on your system before you tried sourcing them from a multitude of other systems. But the problem is because we've been dumping crappy data onto our systems and also due to this fear of missing out, you know, LinkedIn tell us they've got 700 million candidates on the system. Why on earth would we trust our own bullhorn and adapt system to deliver? Well, actually, when you start implementing bullhorn first or adapt first, as we call it, and really training recruiters to source from right in front of them, uh, the placement stats increase massively by 50%, which is ridiculous. Equally, we're not necessarily seeing recruitment of sales, even though it is kind of quite a, an important part. I'm regularly speaking to people who use adapt and bullhorn who don't use it for leads and opportunities gathering and converting. So have a think about this, please, because ultimately, if all you're going to do is buy more kit next year, all you're going to do is carry on crappy behavior and compensate for it. It's not good. So data hygiene and CRM usage, because they're not a KPI within the average recruitment business, are not going to improve. So that might be one thing that you need to think about from a rec tech 2020 perspective next year. Interestingly, again, stuff you've already got that is bloody effective. I mean, you tell me any of your recruiters that have got a 98% conversion rate and I'll start up a recruitment company and come and headhunt them. SMS is by far at the moment, until you all start doing it, a really effective way of getting people to come back to you. Why aren't we using it? Because it feels old fashioned. Well, do you know what? Innovation doesn't have to be technological. What we have to do is, again, get back on the phone. Now, I'm not suggesting we turn off all our digital channels. I'm not suggesting that we go back and start using Flint and using pigeons to communicate, because actually the content of our phone calls is bloody important. But most people tend to buy before they speak to someone. So we still, in order to generate those really warm calls, we need systems, and processes to help us with that inbound piece. No one has got time to ring 700 million candidates on LinkedIn, but you've definitely got time to receive a list from your marketing department of the inbound leads that came in overnight and convert those very warm calls into invoices. You need a website and a CRM to do that. You need a focused marketing team who are connected to sales. You need systems like Herefish, Candidate ID, Lead Feeder, so the first one will enable you to see who's on your website, how often they're coming back. And if you link them through to things like MailChimp, oh my God, the world becomes a very simple lead conversion space. And then you've got Candidate ID and Herefish that work in a relatively similar way insofar as they take it to the next level 
where you can plug content into these systems, tell it which candidates you want to send this content to, grade the candidates when they look at that content, so that when you are sending out your next advert campaign to a list of 20 candidates, the 20 candidates you're going to send that advert to are the ones that are already looking through the glass at your, at your business already. You know, why spend loads of money on job boards advertising a job to people who don't give a damn or press apply because the salary looks great? We have to start creating more time for our lovely recruiters. They are worked ragged. They're currently sifting through job applications of people who aspire to do the job that's been advertised, not who physically can. That creates a ridiculous amount of lag and stops them from getting on the phone. So think about what content needs to be generated that goes onto your website and CRM that can be marketed from an inbound and outbound perspective. You can then see that the people that are clicking on you pick up the bloody phone and start on over again. So if we're going to generate an action plan next year, for me, the biggest thing we have to do in 2020 is fix the humans. You can't, we're not automating them in 2020 or even 2021. And if 50% of our business is going to quit within a year because they've not had training, then we've got to sort that out because actually keeping the rec-to-rec -rec industry afloat through our hiring mistakes and, and training mistakes, for me, isn't a goal that my clients ever come to me with. So you need to really think about what you can do next year without spending any additional money on technology. Analyze what people are not able to do because they've got their hands tied behind their back. Think about what they're doing well that you need to turn the volume up on. Think about your CRM being the first port of call. And if it is not, we did a, we did a business process review with a Bullhorn client recently. We discovered the Bullhorn was number seven on the list for sourcing and business development. And there were loads of other systems that the business was paying for or using for free, but spending their time on before they went to Bullhorn. We've clearly flipped that around with some training, cleaning up a little bit of the data, getting the process mapped out more effectively. But also what we've worked out is as well, if you start joining up some of these systems, life becomes a lot easier. What we would absolutely say to you is the order in which you need to be thinking about doing it is what we call the three Ds. Dud. Can you do it? Do you need to do it? Get rid of it if you don't. If you need to do it, but you're not best placed to do it, and there is someone else that could do it that's maybe cheaper, then delegate it. But if you don't need to do it at all, but it's just that you've always done it, but actually when you stop long and hard to look at it, this fear of missing out means you're going to continue doing it, then get rid. In order for you to generate more of the four C's in 2020, candidates, clients, colleagues, and cash, you need to start triple Ding everything you do in your business and start with the quick wins. So what can you automate? What needs cleaning up to make your life a bit better? What can be integrated? And only do the integration once you've done those first two things. Don't buy loads of kit until you've automated as much as you can and cleaned up as much as you can. You might not need to integrate anything. You might be happy with what you've got. Ultimately, focus on the fact that your key goal is more phone and FaceTime because that's where recruiters will always have a march. And ultimately, think about your goal. Your goal next year is to improve that three C's journey, making sure that when a candidate comes onto the website because they've heard about the fact that you're great, that they apply for a job and they have a great experience. Think about clients having the same, think about recruiters having the same, and ultimately think about how you're gonna measure all of this from a profit perspective next year. If the only people making a profit from the technology that you have in your business are the people that sold it to you, I'm not convinced the recruitment market's got much left in this. So maybe spin that around and look at yourself. Spending loads of money to stand still is not a goal for 2020. Just to remind you, HIT is going live next week. We're starting with ADAPT. The fact that ADAPT has been sold to Bullhorn for us is business as usual. Bullhorn are saying it's business as usual and our clients are going, that's fine. We're not planning on moving just yet. We need our staff next year to make more money from systems. Hence why we've decided to do ADAPT first excuse the pun, to get that up and running very soon to be followed by bullhorns. So if you want any more information on that, drop us a line. Right, that's great. Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for taking time out of your very busy recruitment lives to listen to this webinar and watch the content. We'll send you a link to this later on this afternoon. Take care, everybody. Thank you.